I grew up playing tennis. Tennis was my life as a kid. I started playing when I was three or four years old. My dream was early to play the Wimbledon, as my mom did. I loved the adrenaline, the tournaments, and I loved the challenges, I loved the training. I, I was not very good at school, so at the ninth grade, I actually told my parents I wanted to, to uh, quit school and go all for tennis. I did well in Sweden, but at the age of like 15, 16, 17, I started to realize how, how tough it was internationally to succeed. The competition was so tough. And at the age of 18, I went to a tournament in Finland and it was the same time as my friends were graduating. And I remember losing to a 14 year old Russian girl. I was sitting there in the dressing room having lost this match to a 14 year old. And I just realized that I'm not gonna make it. No, I'm not gonna make it to the top 100, which you have to do to, to, to make it in tennis. You have to be top 100 in the world. So it was a huge identity crisis for me. I had no education, I had nothing. It was like a reality coming to me that was very, very painful. I decided then to take up school. What I had missed over these years of tennis. I wasn't very good in school. I was working hard, so I had pretty good grades. And I got in at Stockholm School of Economics. So I started there at age 21. It was a big, big contrast in my life, coming from tennis, from sport, from tournaments, from having fun to going into one of the toughest schools in, in Scandinavia, basically. So much pressure and uh, everyone was so, so good. And and I think I was the one in the whole school who had to study the most to just manage it. So it was definitely the toughest years in my life. It wasn't until I had a, a lunch uh, with my brother, it was the last year at Sagan School of Economics, and he said to me, but Nina, you, you can't live like this. You can't just, you know, work and work and work. You need to come back to find something you love and enjoy. And he said, what do you love in life? And I said, well, I love, I love sport. <laughs> that's what I love and that's where, how I grew up and, and I like the values in it and uh, I have the passion for it. And also I like business. I went to the library in, in Stockholm and there I found the shelf, it was called Sport Management. And on that shelf I found a book that actually changed my life. It was called What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. Uh, it was written by Mark McCormack, founder of um, IMG, which is uh, the biggest sport management company in the world. This book changed my life. I read it and I decided that I want to be a sport agent because in this book he described the job he was doing when building his company and taking care of athletes and helping them fulfill their dreams. And I felt like, well, I, I didn't achieved my dream which was to play Wimbledon and be top 100 in the world but it would be my biggest dream in the world to help other athletes achieve their dreams and I'm sure that my experience from trying would also bring value and then I have the education from from business and economics and management. I think I, I watched Jerry Maguire one too many times growing up because yeah I watched that movie and I remember that soon when he decided to, to start his own agency and he, he left everything uh, with a bigger uh, American agency. But I think one difference was that he got to take one client with him. I couldn't do that because I had a very tough non-compute. But yeah, it's, it's definitely the movie that uh, has had most impact uh, on my life. There is, was hardly no job at that time in Sweden where I uh, was studying in Stockholm. But I realized that this business is very big in the US. It has its essence in, in US. So I started to, to uh, look for the big American agencies. Finally, I got a chance with one of the biggest agencies in, in US. I moved to Washington DC and started working for one of the biggest agencies there. And from the first day, I love the job. To be back with sport, athletes, tournaments, everything I had missed, adrenaline. It, it was an amazing feeling. I started my journey in Washington. I was then also based in, in Barcelona. And uh, it was eight years I was an employee there. I can uh, tell you, I, I worked 
uh, day and night because I was so privileged to, to have the chance to start working again with my hobby. I knew when I started this job that I was never going to do anything else. I was fortunate. I signed many good players during these years. I learned so much and I was representing from world number ones to upcoming stars and I was traveling all over the world. But I also realized that the more I was working, I realized that my next dream was to build my own agency. I wanted to do it differently. I wanted to do it with my values, with something I could be proud of. There is hardly no women in this business. The big agencies are run by men. And uh, also there are a lot of agents, not so many agencies basically. And I saw an opportunity to copy what I thought was good in the States and to start a company with different values, but to still have the experience and take with me what I liked in the, in the US agencies and uh, do things different value-wise. I knew that we would have a long-term perspective. It would be more focused on uh, humans rather than just maximizing profit. And I wanted to bring back the passion in the sport. I felt it had become too much business and not so much about you know building athletes. If you don't have athletes and people that are happy and strong and uh, stay out of injuries basically there is nothing to sell so the key i think is to build strong human beings who can succeed in their sports so i terminated my contract people thought i was crazy because i really had a good life but i had a dream i, I thought there was a chance to to build an agency a european agency working with different sports and to do it with a long-term perspective with a focus on the athlete's well-being and i named it we sport we because i was so keen that it was going to be we as a team and also with sport because my name last name is Vennerstrom. I was in non-compete after uh, terminating my contract in America, so I had a long non-compete. Suddenly, a year had passed, my non-compete was over. I had a business plan, I had no partner, but I decided to give it a go. At the same time, I had also become a mother and nothing uh, was more important to me than being a good mother and being home with my kids so I couldn't travel as much as I had done in the past and I also felt like I had the network, I had the connections, I knew the business. So my goal and my intention was to hire young people who I could teach and inspire and learn and then they could travel a lot because they don't have families and, and so on. So the privilege when you start your own agency is obviously you can build a team of people that you believe are the best in the business and that's what I was doing very fast because I was a mother. I couldn't do this alone. I couldn't build a, an agency alone. I'm good at certain things but I am very bad at many things. I know what I'm bad at and I know my uh, <laughs> weaknesses and I knew I needed a team. So that was my first focus, to find the right people. And then the plan was to first go into tennis, then go into hockey, then go into football. Paddle, which we are doing as a small part, was not in the plan, but it's something I enjoy. And everyone told me, do tennis, because that's what you know the best, because you come from tennis. But during my non-compete, I had had so much time to analyze hockey, to analyze uh, football, to do all the numbers. I haven't played hockey and I haven't played football and I am not going to be the one talking to our clients about that and how to play, but I knew I knew business and I knew marketing and management and we could help them if I found the right people. So that was the whole plan and I'm very, very proud that today we represent 120 athletes from 25 nations and this is divided between all these sports everything from superstars to next generation athletes i'm so proud proud of my team without them there is no chance this could have been done because what we have done is that we have really built an organization a structure we have lawyers we have marketing people we have sales people we have people who work with the athletes uh, minds bodies nutrition we have economy finance insurances it's like a team you know where everyone does what this person is good at or is best at and i think we've done that really well and then i'm also so proud of our athletes what we always say is that our athletes is our inspiration because as an athlete if there is two things you you learn is that there is no shortcuts to success it's all about working hard and being there and and delivering under pressure and the second thing an athlete learns is how to handle fallbacks because there is no athlete who hasn't had fallbacks it's always tough moments in a career so you have to be a fighter 
and I tell my team, that's our inspiration. We have to do the same. We have to work harder than, than anyone. We have to find new ways to develop, to be better, to improve. We won't always succeed, but it's how we handle these difficult situations that will actually define our future. So our athletes is everything. We admire them, we respect them, we are happy with them, we are sad with them, we feel with them. It's to be part of their journeys, it doesn't matter if it's someone who's uprising or if someone who's been down and coming back or if someone on the top everything is special i'm so grateful that all these athletes put their trust in us and, and my team our journey has just started